took a road trip on the Sea to Sky Highway in British Columbia, and these are the top things to see along the way. We are on a road trip from Vancouver, Canada, up to Whistler. We've just picked up our rental car at Enterprise, and away we go. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful time to be in British Columbia. The first stop after Vancouver on our Sea to Sky Highway road trip is the Britannia Mine, just before you get to Squamish. This is a great national historic site that is privately owned by the way, and there are so many things to do, so make sure you stop over here. There's been like 200 movies and TV productions that have filmed in here. You can go panning for gold. I found my gold, I'm rich now. Look, look, look at that gold. We're gonna go on the train tour, taking us deep into the mine. They have a couple of interactive uh, exhibits and they have a spectacular light and sound show as well, a multimedia show. So it's a lot of fun. Give yourself a couple hours to explore the mine. The Britannia Mine is located right off the Sea to Sky Highway here. As you can see, lots of driving and it's located right on Howe Sound. What a beautiful setting. Extremely excited because we are going on the Copper Quest. We're gonna go on a train journey through the mine. This is my first train mine tour, so woohoo, it's gonna be fun. All right, we're going into the mine and I've selected my hat, a nice yellow one. It's very fashionable. Gotta make sure it fits. I'm ready. And we're off! Into the mine we go! The tour takes you to the center of the mine to see how miners worked at the turn of the 20th century. It was dark, difficult, and deadly work. Your video camera is going to see a lot less in a second. All right. Because we are going to turn it off. <laughs> so, two feet on the ground, please, at all times. No screaming. Are you ready, no Dave? I'm ready. Okay, no one freak out. And three, two. Absolutely fantastic tour here. Learned a lot about the mining industry uh, and man, I didn't realize so much went into it and people really laid their lives on the line to, uh, to mine here in the Britannia mine. And when you're driving the Sea to Sky Highway, don't just drive by, drop in here, take a tour and check out, you'll learn a ton. We're in Squamish, BC, and we are about to go on a scenic flight with Sea to Sky Air, and I'm looking forward to it. It's a very moody day, perfect for this time of year. Hey, <laughs> getting in. Whew, look at this, this is like luxury. Sea to Sky Air runs flights year round, and we took a tour to explore the backcountry of Squamish and Howe Sound. Since we were in a float plane, we had the unique opportunity to land on the water and take a closer look. We're going in for a landing. Can you push to the right? Let's see what happens. Ooh, Dave's gonna drive? Are you driving Oh, Dave? look at that! I'm <laughs> driving here! Let's go to the left a little bit here. Off to the left? Better why don't you spin us all the way around and we'll go face that way. Alright, look at this! Driving the plane! Keep your eyes on the road! <laughs> keep your eyes on the road! <laughs> Exploring how sound by float plane was definitely one of the most unique experiences we've ever had. Landing on the water and driving around while searching for whales is something we'll never forget. Well, that was incredible. What a beautiful flight over Howe Sound. Thanks a lot, Dave. You're I really appreciate it. Come out, Dave. Thank you. Make sure you come and check out Sea to Sky Air here in Squamish. It's pretty awesome. I think you guys are open all year round. Open, yeah, year round. Uh, we might close for Christmas Day, but otherwise we'll be open year round. 
Uh, you can check out seedaskyair.ca and book online. Give us a call. Awesome. Definitely do it because this was awesome. Train wreck trail, here we come. So this train derailment is really worth hiking out to. It's only about 10 or 15 minutes to get out here and you cross the suspension bridge, which is really pretty. And then you've got all of these old train ruins from the 50s. There was a huge derailment. And at the time it was the only way to get out here to Whistler. So it was a pretty big deal. And uh, you know, it's all covered in graffiti now. So it's a lot of fun to just explore and check out these trains. And uh, come out early because the trail gets busy. Uh, we came out at sunrise and people are already starting to join us. This is a pretty cool place to come see, but I think this is also a mountain bike uh, trail. You got like thing that one comes off the top, a landing here and off you go. Pretty crazy. Whoa. Pretty cool, right? train wreck trail. There are five waterfalls to see along the Sea to Sky Highway and they are a great way to get out of the car and view the incredible scenery of the BC coast. Don't forget to look both ways, it's a railway crossing. Shannon Falls. It's the most popular waterfall on the Sea to Sky Highway. It's only a 10 minute walk from the parking lot, so make sure you come out and see it. It's very impressive. And make sure you keep on walking to the lookout 180 meters farther along the path for a beautiful view up the valley. We are at Shannon Falls, which is the third highest waterfall here in British Columbia. And it's a very impressive stop on the Sea to Sky Highway. Oh, I really love our cabin in the woods here at Sunwolf Lodge. There's a river down here with bald eagles come in November and they had as much as 1400 last year. So it's the place to be for November, December. I think even through January and February as well because of the salmon run. The lodge itself, it has a wood stove, you sleep in the loft, it's very homey, and then you can go right, right across to Fergie's for some uh, dinner and lunch. The final stop of our Sea to Sky road trip is Whistler, and there is so much to do here. You need to spend at least a week. Well, a great compliment to a road trip on the Sea to Sky Highway here is to come to the Squamish Lillawak Cultural Center to get a really feel for what the culture was like here ages ago. We're doing the forest walk at the Squamish Lillawak Cultural Center here in Whistler and it's very serene and peaceful. It makes you feel like you're really uh, at one with nature and I think it's a really nice addition to anything that you do when you visit Whistler here. The O'Dane Art Museum is a great complement to the Squamish Lillawat Cultural Center as you can go in and see some First Nations artwork. It's a winter wonderland playground so if you're into skiing and snowboarding come on down. You can do all kinds of stuff with the Olympic Village. You can ride the luge and the bobsleigh. You can go up to Olympic Park and see the ski jumps. You can go on a bear safari. In the summer, there's hiking and mountain biking. There's so much to do. And the village is amazing. There's incredible places to eat, like 21 Steps and Barefoot Bistro and Araxi. And uh, hey, the nightlife's fantastic. There's always something going on in Whistler home to the 2010 Olympics. We're at the Whistler Photo Safari here and we're at the top of the ski jumps. We're in the Olympic Park. And at this time of year, they're the only people that are allowed inside the park. And we are now going over to look over the ski jump. Very cool. 
Our road trip ended in Whistler, but it's only a 90 minute drive back to Vancouver. So once you are done on the Sea to Sky Highway, make sure to take a couple of days to explore this very outdoorsy West Coast city. When you come to Vancouver, you have to make sure you come over to Stanley Park and go for a walk along the seawall. You can rent a bike and it's a great way to just get some fresh air and people watch and see the skyline. Behind me is the marina and we're at the rowing club. There are so many things to do in Stanley Park that you could spend an entire day here. This is one of the most visited aquariums in the world and it's in the center of Stanley Park. Another popular spot is the Stanley Park totem poles at Brockton. The totem poles display the indigenous culture of British Columbia, which is very prevalent along the Sea to Sky Highway. So it makes for a great compliment to your road trip. It's Robbie Burns at Stanley Park. When you visit Vancouver, you have to come to Granville Island. Granville Island is an artist district filled with eateries, boutiques, artist studios, and even a brewery. It's a great place for shopping in the public market and to spend a bit of time strolling the waterfront. If you find yourself on the west coast, make sure you drive to see all these sites. And if you enjoy our videos, be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you get notices in your inbox because we put up a new video each week.